Welcome back. Today we're going to be well fitting on Chesterton, Indiana. Our first train on the NF Chicago line would end up being an ethanol train bound for Conway. Well, it's not going to Conway, but the power would be swapped in Conway, Pennsylvania. The power is CP Leader and a Kansas City Southern Gibo Twin Second. This is a good pair because CP Casey is started already, and but they have not made the paint scheme just yet, which is good. So, since we just saw our first set of form power, that probably means we're going to see a lot of it on this trip. This is our first train in Chesterton, Indiana. I was lucky to check ACCS and put my scanner on. And then at that time, once we were here for like five minutes, there comes a train already. This is our first one, and many more to go. Second set of foreign power, which is very cool. Ned said it was going to be our first train with BNSF power. Well, wow. The CP and the Kansas City Southern was our first set of foreign power. That was a lucky surprise for that one. I thought the train was CP528, but we would actually be seeing 528 later of the day. I just guess that was 66X or something like that. If one of the NS has an all. That was cool. Just seeing the CP in Kansas City Southern. But now, we got this manifest from Elkhart to Chicago, Illinois with some BNSF set of power. The fact this is our third train already and we have not been here for like an hour yet and this is our third train already so it's like a bit busy on the Anishikai one. This is one of the hot shots in the models. So I'm not really surprised they've been going so fast. But we would see a lot of animals because a lot of them will come from the east coast and most of them are coming from Chicago, so we got a lot of them from the east and westbound. This is one of them, and this is our first minimum. They are going quick. Wow. It's been like a year, so 
Yeah, I'm not used to it this fast. There goes the ad already. Jeesh. They didn't took that long to go from approaching this crossing and then clearing it. Here comes our another train. This one's another animal. And it's 4693 ended up having a weird horn. I've seen that unit before. So it's not the first time seeing that. But it does have a foul horn. Which is kind of... Eh, kind of weird. Not the big fan of that horn. I guess you can see the um, the Amtrak 353 would end up coming from the Amtrak's Michigan line from New Buffalo, Michigan. And then once he got to there, to that station, we decided to come over to this crossing where it has a nice mechanical bell, which is very, very nice. I don't see these charger much on the Amtrak Michigan line. So I just thought, hmm, this trip could be a lot of Amtrak's on the Amtrak Michigan line. Well, this is our first one, and I ended up getting the GoPro out. And as you can see, I have not gotten the GoPro out in a long time. So, this Amtrak is pretty cool. He is going quite fast. He was going 110 miles per hour before hitting it into Chesterton or Porter, Indiana. And that said that he, they go quick into Michigan on the Amtrak Michigan line as well. So, once they get to the Chicago line, they go pretty quick as well, but not the type of speed that they used to go on the Amtrak Michigan line. Getting in time of this westbound ending up showing up. Just shot it with the phone, of course. It's good with quality as well, but with the camcorder you can't zoom in all the way where you want to go to or whatever. For me, for my phone at least, I have to sh zoom in only 3x. But it's pretty good with your quality, but camcorder's a lot better, in my opinion. That's why I don't shoot with the phone much. Because I feel like that with the tripod, it's a lot better. So I can do pictures. Well, with the phone, I have to have the one hand with the phone and the other hand with the camera. So that's... I don't really like doing that much anymore. I used to, but not. Sometimes I would. Sometimes I don't. So I was just keeping an eye on ATCS on for this westbound. I was tracking it here and there, but I didn't know he would be this quick going by. I just thought he would have to stop because due to the Amtrak 53. But they ended up crossing him over. So that works. We do have another westbound. Here he is. About to blow for the crossing. 
which he is right now. But this one's another ethanol train with two normal NS's units. So that ain't too surprising. Just two dash nines. So he was blowing here at Wiley's Bar. Another train would end up passing through Wiley's Wellhouse on the end of Chicago. 30Q from Chicago to Elkhart, Indiana. This one has a lot of sand cars. So I'm not sure if this one's heading for Bellevue. This one could be 380 from Chicago to Bellevue. So that could this train could be 30 to 380 or 30Q. Whatever. But 30Q comes from Chicago to Elkhart. He has a couple hot ash cars on the mix of this mix frame. So a lot of my buddies, a couple of them, are here already. A few hours ago I was here alone at Justin, Indiana. Now a couple of my buddies, a few of them I have not met before are here in Chesterton, meeting up with me in Chesterton, Indiana. After 10 minutes that 
other one went by, we get this other one, this other eastbound that is coming this way. This one, however, is coming from Indiana Harbor, Indiana, to Carvet, Alabama. And he's got a long way to go for this train to journey. This is a steel train from Indiana Harbor. The leader is an ST-70 Ace, and the Detroit unit is a Jeevo, DC Jeevo, that is trailing second. These loads are heading for Calvet, Alabama. You can see Matt, that's being like stupid over there. So, 60C, from Indiana Harbor to Calvet, Alabama. After another few minutes, we would get another westbound. We actually have not gotten to the westbound in a bit, but this one finally shows up after like 30 to 40 minutes of waiting. It's nothing too special, but we are just well fitting with my buddies from the Chicagoland area. And they decided to come over to Chesterton. Well, why not meet them in Chesterton today? A Dash 9 is leading, and another Jeevo that is Tron second. It's a DC Jeevo. Whatever. But this hot shot in Immortal, heading bound for Chicago and Illinois. Either 59th Street. This is NS-17N from Bellevue, Ohio to Chicago, Illinois. He would work Elkhart Yard to be doing some couple drop-offs and doing some switching. And right after that, now he's bound for Chicago. Two GC Gros. One is a DC, one is a Tier 4. ET-44AC, or AH, is 
Jiro is 12 in second. And this is another manifest. So, we get a lot of manifest in this area. Unless this is a CP train that I don't know about. But this one's an NS. Either 17N or 381. Here comes NS-265 was an H2 Jibo dwelling out of third. He is hauling it. An AC-44C6M is leading the Ray with an H2 Jibo and then another AC-44C6M is trailing third out of three. But there is a lot of AC 44 C 6 M's around. And those get boring pretty quickly, but mm, I don't know. They're getting ready to be in the 47th series. Ugh, that's boring. But this animal will be either coming from above Buffalo or Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Here comes another eastbound. This one will be the first eastbound since we had three westbounds. And this day has been really good today. Not gonna lie, it's been pretty busy. This eastbound's hauling it east. And I think what I think this one is, this one's probably 268. He is coming from Chicago, but I don't know where he originates out of. So, with that said, this animal is heading east flying. Because he only took like 57 seconds to, like, clear. After the front end, it took 57 seconds to clear. Here, just a second. I don't know if he is long, or... I do know he's short today. Because I can still see the the front end. Here comes a, another westbound. This one is NS31M from Sterling Heights, Michigan to all the way to Heyman, Indiana. He is an ROI train from Sterling Heights going towards 
Heyman, Indiana. Here comes another manifest, but this is kind of odd. Two NS units on front, one Chivo, one AC44C6M, and two UPs. Wow, two NS and two unit Pacifics. That is cool. That's really, really cool. I have not gotten that in a long time. Sometimes I would get that, but I haven't gotten that in a while. If you've seen my, um, the, the morning of North Baltimore, when I was catching, uh, before I was catching the Chessie, I caught a BNSF grain train, which is G110, with two CSX locomotives and two BNSF locomotives. Both of them were still on, were on a train, and... That manifest that we had before 734, and that would be the same thing. But the lead, the 12 and 3rd unit would not be the same position as the lead unit was. Alrighty, we would have another eastbound. Well, this is gonna say, I'm just gonna say this right now. It's kinda stressful right now, because not gonna lie, we would have 266 coming around the corner around Chesterton, but I would be tracking the Amtrak 364, whatever, 
He is the cold water. He's going all the way to Port Huron, Michigan. But however, when we were getting 266, it was kind of tough. It was like we had to get the engine to go to the Amtrak Michigan line. Well, that would not be the case for this trip. We would just get the power and then get in a truck and then head over to, to the crossing of the Amtrak Michigan line. We got our next tray. This is a CP528 from Madison City, Iowa, all the way to Albany, New York. To way to get there, he would have to go through Chesterton, then Alcart, Butler, Detroit, and then basically Toronto, Batral, and then go south from there to Albany. But today's power is a CP locomotive GE that is leading, solo leading, 528. But our special, what is for power, is going to be facing as a weird DPU. So, if you guys can stick along, just as that's what I'm saying, this would actually be our last train for today for like two and a half hours. B10 would end up showing up, but it would have been two and a half hours since we didn't see anything. And the only thing that we did is just play football and like kept an eye on trains. While that two hours, it got dark, and now we're all fitting in the darkness. I will be spending the night, all my buddies are gonna be going home after all the well finning they did with me today. None of them will show up for tomorrow, which is very sad. I would not say all day tomorrow, but I will get up very early though. v Tad has a SD70M-2 Duo and a Jeep Trailing 3rd.
Well, this is NS-264 now getting on a move after B-10 went by westbound towards Burnt Harbor, Indiana. 264 ending up getting a signal, got lines to head eastbound on the old NS Chicago line. But ever since 528 sat there, this 264 has to set there too. So they finally got this one on a move. But they're going to keep going slow due to the Otis Hill. Here comes another Animortal. This was shot on a different camcorder that I brought with me to Chesterton, Indiana. This one, however, is one of the J.P. Hunt and Immortals. He's heading towards Pennsylvania. I have no clue where we're at. Unless he's heading to Croxton, New Jersey. I don't know, because, well, they can either go any other different destination that I don't know of. But, he was going quite slow, dude, because they were bypassing the 528 that's been sitting there for like at least three hours from now. You can see the headlight, and then here comes Amtrak 30, which is the Capital Limited from Chicago to Washington, D.C., that had to go on the same track, going slow as well. It's not as fast as I thought he would be going, but I thought he would be going like at least like 60 or 50 miles per hour, but he's not. Due because they had two intermortals ahead of him. And all my friends went home, and me being alone, so I'm now track siding by alone. And then here comes this westbound ethanol. Bound for Chicago or Cicero, Illinois, with two NS Jeevos leading away on this ethanol train. Here comes another westbound that we end up getting, but this one is an animal bound for Chicago and annoys. Two C6Ms that are leading the way on this westbound animal. What is so weird about this is the westbounds do not have a speed restriction, but I think the eastbound do. But for some reason, 528 ending up having a fresh, fresh crew now, so they're gonna make their way eastward. Unless they're gonna like park it in um, Elkhart or Laporte Siding, which Laporte Siding is what in Manifest you she keeps it. They usually keep the Manifest in Laporte Siding, but I don't know. I think they could have just went to Elkhart or something like that. But now the closest main from us is what back in service. Now eastbound can take that track once again so they don't have to wait for westbound to take the other track. This is another intermortal heading eastbound on a Chicago line.
we ended up having another eastbound on a closer track. Well, I would say this is another animal from Chicago. So, this one's probably going out to, I would say, out to the state of New Jersey. He could go all the way over there or go to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. That's hard to say. Both of your animals are going to be nightly in just a You may get some manifest around night time, but I'm just going to say a lot of animals I have seen are during the night. There's a lot of them in daytime too, but there's here and there with them at night and day. This is the Amtrak Lakeshore Limited 48. 48 comes out of Chicago, Illinois to all the way toward Albany, New York. He would get to Toledo, Ohio around 3.22 a.m. He goes to Boston, but that's 448. Here comes Anna's 4003 trailing second on 16G from Chicago to Conway, Pennsylvania. Well, that was a very lucky surprise. I did not hear about anything about that unit coming this way. I thought this was just going to be a normal NS that's leaving and trailing as well. Well, it is a normal NS, but it's the Black Main Heritage locomotive. It's actually the specialist unit that's trailing second. It's not your heritage. It's just the specialist heritage. So, 16G would also work Elkhart, Indiana. Here Ooh, comes a ACC. westbound and a mortal. This one has an ACC leader and an M-2 would end up being trailing second on this animal. The M-2 would be a surprise at this late hour because, well, it usually does not trail on an animal. This is not a local. This is a normal and a mortal. This is a very very long way in a model bound for Chicago 
but the ACC leader was quite cool to see. I don't have not seen a lot of ACC lately. Unless they're like south of the United States, or they're just not able to be seen. So I don't know, that's, this is just cool to see. It's ACC and then an M-2 trailing second. ACC and an M-2, that's actually a really cool setup in the DMP conference. This is our final train of the night till I get up in the morning. <laughs> it won't much sleep, but I'll probably get as much as sleep as possible if I can. This is CP KC, but I'm just gonna say CP 137 from Toronto to Franklin Park, Illinois, Bentonville, Illinois, with a CP leader and a CSX ET for tier 4 duo and trailing second. That would end up being a four power on NS and CP Railway. Four thirty in the morning in Central Time. I only got four and a half hours of sleep. However, we're back trackside. My parents are still asleep, but I don't care. I at least I'm still trackside-ing. This is the second day. We will be going home early during the day. It's because, well, we wanted to get some sleep after. <laughs> after the trip is over and this trip is pretty good so far and I would say it's pretty good even though we have not seen much special stuff well that'll change everything today because today today's 49 would have a little special unit that is leading I'm not gonna explain that one just yet we have another eastbound and immortal he is considering flying east. Well, if you can tell, this is really good footage. And the sky isn't like dark. And this is what's my Panasonic camera camcorder. And yeah, this is pretty good. This is our second eastbound and immortal of the day. So we got plenty more to go.
comes a westbound on the Chicago line. I've been kept checking ATCS here and there. And this westbound went through South Bend around 4.30 this morning. And it's around 5.20 something in the morning. And the sun is about to come up. And this Asinol is bound for Chicago. He has two NS that are leading. I'm surprised we have not seen any Asinol, any of four power on these Asinol yet. But we've seen a couple, but not much. This is now third train of the morning. And as you can see, this Asinol. It was kind of like this where I had to go from the lighting. But it looked pretty good. Here comes another westbound. And if you could see, why is he slowing down? That will explain that one way here. He is not lined. There is an eastbound that is coming this way, though. He's not coming, going fast for here. He's not that long, and he ain't going fast either. The reason why he's going quite slow is, well, it's kind of confusing. If you could see that other train on the closest track that I am right now, that is CSX M326, bound for Grand Rapids, came from Chicago Bar Yard. And the eastbound would be another in immortal. If you can west watch the west of this these clips of this intermodal and the westbound. That explains it all. Alrighty. I don't know what's going on. Why is he not going as track speed? I guess what's going on is this intermortal was ending up going to be stopping uh, because he will be meeting the westbound that is stopped as of right now. So. These, this crew would end up going 10 miles per hour and then stopping before the crossing. And then after the crew from the westbound train, he would get off the train. And then once the crew could get off, this one goes back and takes off, but not very far. He would go to the crew where he was at and then... I don't know if they were talking or meeting, but I don't know. That was weird.
Well, here comes our westbound that ended up stopping and then getting a signal after the 326 that cleared. And then now, this intermodal is taking, taking off bound for Chicago. The ET44AH would end up taking the lead and then a dash 9 trailing second and then another ET44AH Jeevo the trailing third on this intermodal. This intermodal had to stop because of 326 was on the main and the eastbound that we had that at NS that kept stopping that was on the other track and then well the intermodal that's that 326 that was on the Chicago line, now on the Grand Rapids, that was on the same track as this intermodal westbound. But now we're good. This westbound has a sit. CP 230 would end up went through, but my mom ended up recording this one on my Panasonic camcorder. Thanks, mom, for doing that. You didn't have to, but I got it on my phone. But luckily, she was out while I was in the side of the bus car. The DPU is another CP locomotive. Anyhow, I've been seeing a couple CP trains, but not as much as I did last year. I only saw a bit of them this year, but it's cool because CP is quite cool. I don't get to see much CP trains, even I'm in Michigan. Sometimes when I go to Wamla, sometimes you don't get much. Sometimes we, we all get NS and CP and CSX, but it's like that. But Chesterton, sometimes different. But I would get this westbound that I thought we would get blocked of, but we did not. But the BNSF H2 would end up being trailing position on the fixed weight bound for Chicago.
we would end up getting this eastbound. This was another in immortal. Luckily, we would see a lot more trains this morning so far. I've been up since 4.30 in the morning, seen a lot. Two AC 44 C6Ms, different numbers. 46 was trailing of the series and 45 series was leading of this morning in the model. I don't know if this is 28X, but it could be. He's heading for Clarkson, New Jersey if this is 28X. Well, here comes our last westbound till Amtrak arrives. Amtrak 29 would end up coming through after this westbound goes by. But the, this westbound would end up go through first because this one is a hot shot in a mortal bound for Chicago with two NSs in the lead. Nothing special. But it's still cool after seeing two NSs in the lead of this Animortal. But, you usually see quite a few of them, but they usually come through during the night. But here in Chesterton, we see them during the day. Or morning, whatever. But, this one's bound for Chicago. Well, the crews of Amtrak 29 would end up being so friendly to me that they gave me a horn show. But that was very cool. Amtrak 29 would come from Washington, D.C. to Chicago, Illinois. Two BNSF GROs would end up taking the lead of an Elkhart Bounder manifest from Chicago, Illinois. This would be 34G. So, he is flying. I checked ACCS as well, and my dad is finally up. He slept quite a while. My mom slept till 6.30 in the morning.
we never really visited the Grand Rapids subdivision, but now we actually have. This is CSX M327 from Grand Rapids to Chicago, Illinois. This is a short 327 this morning. I would thought the CSX 1827, the BNO Heritage, would end up being leading. I would thought so, but it's not. He would end up sticking a while in Grand Rapids, which sucks, because I thought he would be coming through here. However, a week later, as soon as I was ending in this video, after a week later, he would actually go on to 327, which sucks, because it's like I wanted to see it through here. But, oh well. At least we saw something on the Grand Rapids. Never really visited the Grand Rapids, though. Even though I went to the Amtrak Michigan line, this is the same crossing, but the same road, and yeah, it was like that. And we were ending up getting a spot, and this is the same spot as well. Amtrak 49, the Lakeshore Limited from Alpine, Alpine to Chicago, Illinois, with something in the lead. Amtrak 50th anniversary, which is 108. 108 is the Phase 6 Heritage locomotive. It's the 50th anniversary, would end up being leading on Amtrak 49 this morning. Which is very, very cool. I really, every time I come to Chesterton, I really never see any good stuff on Amtrak. Either the Lakeshore and Capitol. But this morning would end up treat as well. Here comes our next eastbound. It would end up being another 16G, I guess. Heading for Conway, Pennsylvania with a solo EMD SD70 Ace from Union Pacific. After eating some breakfast at the Wiley's Wellhouse, while I was eating, I was kept checking ATCS because we would get another eastbound, and this one is another manifest from Chicago to all the way to Elkhart, Indiana, with an AT44AH would be leading the way of this morning's manifest. I don't know what the symbol on this one. This is probably. I would guess 30Q, Chicago to Elkhart train, he was a very quick train, and now we got a CP231 from Toronto to Bensonville, Illinois, I don't know if this one is 231, but he is a manifest, so he is probably 231.
Well, we do have a Edez Athanol train that would end up being one of our Athanols. Not sure if this one's heading towards North Carolina or Conway, Pennsylvania, where he will be getting dropped by the power. But since this one is NS power, I'm not sure if this one's going to be dropped or not. But I was a little bit too close with the tripod, but it's still smooth, whatever. But I ended up getting a really good camera shot with this Athenol track. And this Athenol is loaded towards the Delaware of the state of Delaware. Not sure in Delaware where he's going. Probably Wally Bowl in Delaware. And meanwhile, I would be here by another westbound mixed freight where we, we would see this these engines once again, but I did not record it that one. At the time being, I forgot I was with I forgot to record the power of last night, but luckily we saw it this morning. It was the last night's mixed freight and last night's power that is leading this mixed freight from Elkhart. Well, here we are, our final last train here on the Anna Chicago line. This is our final train on the Anna Chicago line, but it's another manifest from either Elkhart or Conway or Bellevue. I was thinking, however, this could be 17 and from Bellevue to Chicago. This might be 17 and it does not have a DPU. The only leader that we have is this unit with a Dash 9 that is leading this manifest. That would only be our solo leader of this manifest today. But this is our last train here at the Wiley Well.
This would end up being our last trade here at Joseph's Wiley Wellhouse. But we would actually end up being seeing one more train. But we are here on the Amtrak Michigan line. Which we would see our final train on the here at Chesterton, Indiana area. This is the Blue Water from Port Huron to Chicago, Illinois. He would have one charger that is leading the way and then the other charger on the other side of the train. I was fixing to get ready to drone up and just be being sad that this is our final train here at Chesterton. But I will see y'all either the Michigan or State or the Buckeye State Wells. Sad to say this trip is over, but many more trips to go. I will see y'all here at Justin next time, next year.